Welcome at another episode of Behind the Roast. Today I am going to focus on the art and science of optimizing your roast profiles using the Giesen Roast Profiler software. This is a tool that Giesen has been um, working on for many years and um, quite recently they launched an update of this program and we will be doing today, as part of uh, today's uh, session, we will be doing also a roast where you can see how I interact with the uh, roast profiler. Before I dive into this topic, it's probably good to kind of look over uh, to review some of the requirements, the requisites to be able to um, use such tool and to be able to do roast profiling effectively. You have to um, be well aware of all the terms, the terminology, the difference between air temperature, beam temperature, how they relate to each other. Um, in the case of Gießen, we have this unique parameter called pressure, which is basically um, a parameter that allows you to have an other way to uh, create roast profiles. And you also need to be able to understand, you know, what are some of these sensory milestones during roasting? I've seen the tendency with a lot of roaster operators nowadays that they're so glued to their um, digital interface, to their computer screen, that they often are not aware of um, the intricacies of the flavors of the coffee and the aromas of the coffee while it wanders through the roast profile. So I do recommend, although uh, tools like the Gitsen Roast Profiler are highly valu valuable, I do recommend that you also understand what the underlying dynamics are during roasting. And um, here at Boot Coffee Campus, we always try to also in our courses to focus on um, training our students in not only understanding how to use the tools in roasting, but also to understand what's going on actually with the coffee. Um, so I will um, show you also how to record a profile with the Giesen profiler. And then um, what we will not cover today is some of the more advanced features, which will come back in one of our next uh, episodes. So what is a profile? Just to, for to, first to start with. It, it basically, a profile basically describes how a coffee was roasted with what type of parameters, with what type of temperatures, with, um, in what time frame, at what heat levels. And um, it is a, um, I would say it's a pathway of the coffee, the coffee beans from unroasted from green to their finished stage being roasted. So understanding uh, roast profiles helps you tremendously to improve consistency between roasts. This is where I think um, roast profiler software really serves really well. Um, it's a great tool for quality control when you're cupping your coffee at the end of your roasting day or the day after your roasting. Then it's great to link the information from your roast profiler software with the sensory uh, information and then it's also uh, roast profiles if you record them well they're great learning tools they're great for sharing information needless to say they're very um, effective uh, in order to be able to roast efficiently and also for the for the sake of profitability because the more consistent you are and the better you are able to seek the peak of the quality um, profile of the coffee um, potentially the more it gives you in hand um, once it comes to sell and distribute the coffee. What kind of measurement tools should be considered? You might want to um, invest in some green bean sizing screens. Also, you should be able to do a, a defect measurement, a defect indication. You want to understand you know, what is the moisture of the coffee, the density, and then potentially what is the water activity of the coffee. So all of these tools that I'm mentioning, they are tools that are available in the trade. Now then, you want to focus on your cupping uh, methodology, what kind of cupping form uh, or cupping software are you envisioning to use. And then um, 
Last but not least, during the roasting, you will want to understand through which cycles your coffee roasting um, uh, flows. So when you start roasting in your first stage, your coffee passes through an aromatic stage where um, you kind of smell the smell of grass and then hay. Following to that, that is indicative for the drying cycle to really um, be in full swing. That is fo followed by the Maillard reactions. They start around um, 250 degrees Fahrenheit and they continue throughout the roast, but at 300 degrees they start peaking. Then uh, around 350 degrees, you really get into the caramelization phase. This is when the beans start um, browning, they start changing color, and then you focus in or then you get into the first crack. And then when you continue roasting, your roast development um, time and the roast development percentage as the Giesen roast profiler also calculates it, starts to evolve. Whether or not you are going into the second crack, nowadays most roasting companies don't necessarily do that, um, you will want to understand where in the process your roast is. Then during the roast, you want to observe um, at what temperature do you charge the roast, what is the bean temperature curve that is evolving, what kind of rate of rise, the temperature change, usually that's expressed per 30 seconds on the bean temperature, what is the um, profile for your exhaust temperature, and then what is the um, heat application, usually, um, and I'm going to show you a roast going to do a roast with you where we start at 30% and then when we increase the heat to 60 and then we gradually ramp down. You want to follow the uh, color changes and then um, during your roasting profile you want to also keep track of course of your rate of rise and uh, you want to understand where your first crack is. Now all of these observations can be done visually, you can write them down on good old form and paper, but using a digital tool really helps you to compare roasts continually against one another. And that is, I would say, a key benefit. Another key benefit, as I've already mentioned, is the efficiency factor and the uh, quality control that you're able to do at the end of your roast. And that is, you know, very important. These coffees here next to me, most of these coffees have all been roasted using digital tools like the Giesen Roast Pro Fighter. And so before we get into um, this session and before we get our hands on the roasting machine, um, there are always specific questions that can arise and I want to um, invite you to um, email me willem at bootcoffee.com or you can also just email to um, our friends at Giesen for specific questions that we must and should incorporate in um, one of our next uh, sessions. I'm here at Boot Coffee Campus next to our W6A Giesen Roaster. We have a um, uh, laptop here, this is a Mac, it works both with Macs as well as with PCs, simple Ethernet cable and then I've been preheating the roasting system and I want to um, show you how easy and intuitive it is to roast with this um, system setup and um, this basically, this computer now takes over the functions of the um, console uh, it doesn't really take it over, but it, it, it duplicates it and it gives you a much better level of um, control than if you have just the small um, control screen of the control cabinet. And so now I hit record, meaning that I'm going to record this roast. I'm going to charge the coffee. And now I am on a roll. But now let's get close to the screen. And here you can see my air temperature. It's coming down because the cold beans are in there. This is the bean temperature probe information. The rate of rise, which is still negative because the coffee is still um, picking up, getting accustomed to the temperature in the drum. 
This is my flame level right now at 30%. I'm going to increase that pretty soon. Uh, that's my drum speed and then my air pressure. I've set it at um, 130 Pascal. And I can easily increase my air temperature, which I'm going to do now as well. 361, 371, 381, 391. I'm actually going to push it out of the way so that it's not going to interfere with my roasting operation. Now it's more of a safety set point. And now I'm going to, since we are already roasting for one minute and 20 seconds, now I'm going to increase my power, my flame level. And uh, let's do it to 60%. I'm roasting about half a batch, so that 60% is safe to go. And here on my screen, you can see basically the profile that is unfolding. I have my bean temperature in red. In blue, I have my air temperature. And then here, yellow, that's the rate of rise that is gradually taking shape. It's peaked, as you um, can see here. I'm going to highlight this here. It peaked here at about 15 degrees Fahrenheit. And this rate of rise is the temperature increase of the bean temperature in Fahrenheit expressed for 30 seconds. So now, and let's just keep our eyes on the computer screen. I'm going to show you the... bean color at this point. The beans are definitely still picking up heat. And also, this interface is really, really very, um, very user-friendly, I think. Air temperature now is 342 degrees, bean temperature 289. We're now developing some really decent Maillard reactions. They're peaking at around 300 degrees Fahrenheit. And my rate of rise is, at this point is 8.1 Fahrenheit and going up gradually. It's hovering around 8 degrees Fahrenheit. And I'm, at this stage, I'm um, going to let the profile unfold and very gradually I st I'll start reducing my flame level while the roast gets more advanced. You can see now bean temperature 309. At, with this roaster setup, we typically have the first crack at around um, 360, 365 degrees. So I'm now around 50 degrees away from that. If I make a quick calculation, that's in about four minutes, I can expect my first crack. That's my quick math that I uh, did for this purpose. So at this point, I'm going to reduce my flame level slightly. And I'm going to go down to 40%. And so the cool part is this profile is being recorded. And I can replay this with a next batch, meaning it will exactly repeat that profile with a next batch of this coffee. This is where we are right now. Looks pretty good. We're now at the end of the Meillard reactions, or at the end of the major impact of the Meillard reactions. Now we see the beginning of caramelization of um, sugars. And I also want to show you, I can of course, during my roasting, I can also increase further my PA, my air pressure. Let's do that. Increasing it to 150. So that you can hear this maybe also. Now my fan speed increases slightly. That indicates also that the machine is now working harder to maintain this slightly higher pressure. And I'm going to show you also the the color at this point. And so as I mentioned, uh, I was expecting the first crack at around 
eight minutes more or less that would give us one more minute. I think we're getting pretty close to that um, uh, point. Bean temperature 362, air temperature 387. Um, should I do any other adjustments, maybe I will reduce my power, my flame level. Let's reduce it another 20 points. And um, so this is cool. I can also hover with my cursor over the curves and I can see exactly what is going on at any time. That's really cool. I can replay this roast really well. And I can also do this after the roast is completed. Now, uh, let's see what shall we do. Now it's eight minutes, bean temperature 377. So we're already beyond the point where I expected the first crack to be. So my prediction was a little bit off, but we are right at that point. Huh? Eight minutes, 11, perfect. First crack is going on. So I'm going to make a uh, note of this. So you can see my um, uh, profile now records that first crack was starting at 8 minutes 20 seconds at 383 Fahrenheit. So now at this point I'm going to reduce further my flame level. Let's bring it down another 15 points. So now I'm at 15, at 5% flame level, really low flame going to, this is the bean color at this point. I'm going to now reduce my flame level to the lowest possible setting. I'm going to actually turn it off. And the Gisen roast profiling system can now, if you're controlling it to the lowest point it can set it as a minimum level but I think you know we are already getting close to an RD of um, 13 14 percent I wanted to have a roast development of a little bit more uh, let's do one more look and so now we have an RD roast development of 15 percent and I'm going to call it a roast. And at this point I'm hitting the stop of my roast profiler. And there we go. And then I can save this profile this was Finca La Cabra, roast 11, and safe. So now it's almost a day later, and I'm so curious how this Finca La Cabra coffee um, tastes that we roasted yesterday. We had a roast development of 15%. That was um, uh, very close to where I had foreseen that roast profile. I was hoping for 16%, but given the color during the roasting, I decided to cut it off at 16, uh, at 15%. This is the coffee. I wrote the roast date on the label in order to keep track of that. And um, the beans, they measured out to an extra on 60 beans and 64 grounds, which is kind of um, ideal, in the ideal range where I'd hoped it to be. And now I have my Chemex ready. So you don't always have to necessarily do a cupping profile, a cupping test on your coffees, but you can also do a Chemex. And in this case, my Chemex recipe is um, one on 15, meaning one gram of coffee versus 15 grams of uh, water. And now I'm going to assess the sweetness of this coffee. Balance, sweet, kind of a honeydew, um, honeydew cantaloupe flavor. 
a nice, very pleasant lingering aftertaste. The acidity is, um, is mellow, not too intense. So compared to what we typically look for with this coffee, with this Finca La Cauda Panama, um, this falls within the spectrum of parameters what we're looking for. So this is a um, yeah, roast that I think has been successful. So now, let's say that this now becomes my benchmark, then the profile that I have recorded using my Geese and Roast Profiler, I can use that as a comparison against other profiles that I'm doing. If my next profile would end up faster, then I can expect to uh, find you know, differences in acidity. If it's slower, then I could have more scent of body. And so my um, index of roast profiles that I can review can be a very helpful tool in order to uh, maintain that level of consistency for the sake of um, yeah, optimizing my quality. And this is a fairly, you know, relatively straightforward, relatively simple overview of how you can be on top of your roast profiles for the long run. And whether I am doing this profile personally or that my um, assistant roast operator will do it, they can always look back at the profile. They can also check back at the color of the beans and they can also do the assessment on the flavor profile in order to keep the end results constant, consistent. And that's what it's really about. So let us know any questions. If uh, they come up, we are always there to help you and see you the next time at Behind the Roast.